is Ryan from Notero. Uh, today I'm going to show you what you can expect for the multi-location feature, um, which is going to be released uh, throughout August. So there's two stages to this. Um, the first stage is basically preparing your account for the switchover um, so that you're ready to go and your account has all your multiple locations set up. Um, for the second stage, which is when we actually switch over online booking to make use of the multiple locations. Um, yeah, so uh, basically in order to do that, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is head over to the new location section in your settings. So this is uh, this will be new, and um, what'll happen here is you'll see that you'll have one address. Um, the day that we launch this, uh, the stage one, uh, you'll have your address migrated over um, based on whatever was in your details. So uh, your clinic details will have moved over your address into your first location. Um, and of course, from here, you can edit that if you'd like um, and edit any of the details about that location, but also you can add more locations. So as an example here, I will add a second location. So I'll just call it second location. I'm going to leave it enabled. I'm going to use it for billing and I'm going to display it in online booking. I'm not going to go through all of that, but I'll just leave those on for this demo. Um, and we'll say it's 44 uh, Orange Street. And okay, so I put the address in there. Uh, the next thing is I'm going to give it an email. Now you can use the same email as your main location, um, but the idea here is if you have different emails for different locations, then uh, when when patients get emails and they reply to those emails, it'll go to the correct location if it's an appointment notification, for example. Um, but I will just use our uh, same email for this example. Okay, so then I'll click save and that second location is now entered. Um, I can switch the sequence of them because they are going to show up in a drop down menu. Um, so if you have a primary location, you can put that first on the list. But um, yeah, so I've got two there. I can keep adding as many as I want, uh, but I'll just leave it at two for now. So the next thing you're going to want to do once you've added all your locations is, is go to the migrate locations uh, page. And on this page, what this is, is it's a list of all the locations that you've ever put into any of your appointments or availabilities. So these are actually coming out of the text boxes of the appointments or the availabilities um, since you've ever used the calendar. Um, and so this is this is uh, this tool is great for um, assigning the location that you have to the newly structured location that you just created. Um, and also it's great for consolidating duplicates. So you can see here this address is in here several times um, because it was typed differently, but it's effectively the same address. So and I can see how many appointments and availabilities I have within each of them. So what I'm going to do is for each of these, I'm going to select um, the appropriate location. So the first three are uh, 123 Apple Street. Uh, and there we go. And then the last one is 44 Orange Street. And so what this is going to do is assign the location um, of, of, of the selected location here to the events in the calendar ac accordingly. So just click Save, Confirm. And that's done. So now um, this page shows no locations to be migrated because I don't have any that aren't already migrated. If we head over to the calendar, now we'll see um, that the uh, that the appointments now have the locations set. And um, so if I just open an appointment here as an example, um, so we have this little message here, but also we show two location fields. So this is the text location. And then this is the actual structured location. So I can change it, but it's already been preset because I just did the migration. Um, the idea here is that going forward, you'll need to maintain both the text location and the structured location until we complete stage two, which is when we actually uh, sunset the this, this text location field and you will no longer need to update it and you won't be able to update it. And you'll just be working off the structured location. Um, and so uh, when I create a new appointment or an availability, uh, we'll want to make sure that in addition to setting 
um, the location field here which is used still in online booking you'll also want to correctly select whichever location that is um, so there's a bit of double entry for now but uh, eventually you just won't have to answer these questions at all um, with, re with regards to the text location field um, yeah so uh, that's that just make sure that you do it in that order if you forget um, to set a location or you select um, um, select the wrong location you can always go back and edit it again um, and again you can also go back to the migration tool uh, if you've added uh, events or availabilities or appointments that do not have a uh, structured location assigned okay and then the uh, other thing just to uh, be aware of is that also uh, invoices now have the location feature available so if I go to the invoice um, I can edit that and you'll see that now I can actually specify which location uh, that invoice took place at. That's all for now. Um, so just uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. We're happy to help. Um, and yeah, it'll be great once we're done this uh, transition. Uh, it'll make uh, using the calendar a lot easier. And we've got a lot of other features uh, coming down the pipe for uh, multi-locations. Thank you very much.